Welcome to the new sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel like I've been locked out of hell. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Welcome to Life by the Numbers with celebrity numerologist Michelle R. Bow. Broadcast on UBN Radio from the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. Exploring topics of spiritual growth, current affairs, celebrity news, and more through the lens of numbers. And we're live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. By the numbers with moi, a celebrity numerologist Michelle Arbeau, and I have such a fabulous guest with me today. And as I promised last week, I would have a guest, and sure enough, I do. But this one is really special because this movie, I, I actually ended up meeting him at the Conscious Life Expo uh, a while back, and what I experienced versus what I expected was completely different. And you, you definitely left a lasting impression on me, so I want to give a oh big my. welcome to, and I want you to say your name because I, I don't want to mess it up, so you say it first. <laughs> sure. Emmanuel Etier, okay. the director of Femme Women Healing the World. Yes, he is, and it's such a great movie, and to me, it's just it blew my mind to find out that a man had done a documentary all about women, and this is, is a documentary not just about a few women, about lots of women, there's a, a what, a hundred? Yeah, b basically during three years, we interviewed really like 500 women. Wow. So it's kind of for, for guy, I mean, it's like a dream come true because you hang out with 500 women for three years. My <laughs> wife hated me, of course, <laughs> you know, she still does yes. a little bit, uh, but nothing happened. And uh, at the end, we have 100 women. So we wow. have Nobel Peace Laureate, like Shirin Ebadi from Iran, Mary Maguire from, uh, Ireland and uh, Judy Williams from uh, the UK, but we've got also Sharon Stone, who is my partner, who is in it and who produced with me. Uh, we've got Maria Bello, the actress, uh, Ricky Lee Jones, the singer, and, and so many other people, uh, shamans and peace activists, politicians, economists. So it, it, it was actually, I think, as a guy, it was getting for me a real education about that world that I had no idea about. Because, you know, we guys are, we are raised in a cave, the, the macho pig cave, basically, that tells you, you're in charge, you're the conqueror, yes. you're the taker. So basically, we are, we we are raised to castrate all of our human feelings, all of our human identity, and we are forced to become this jerk, basically, this this arrogant prick who's who's pretending he's in charge when really nobody's in charge. You know, together yeah. we might try to do something about fixing peace, war, and all that, but on your own you cannot do anything. Um, so it was it was really refreshing to get a different perspective on life and 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 therefore on myself. You right. know, realizing I, I don't have to be the Superman because that doesn't exist. No, it doesn't. It's 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 us human being trying to figure it out together, one day at a time. You have to be humble. You know, you're not going to fix the world overnight, and and definitely it's not going to be one man, one president. It's not going to be one messiah. It's going to be all of us getting to work. Did you believe this before you started this project, or no. is it this movie no, no, that no, no, shifted no, no, you? No, no, I was, I was, I was kind of a, a macho pig. Now so I'm, you were now that I'm guy. I'm just a macho. So. The, the pig <laughs> kind of disappeared, but uh, yeah. I'm still that macho guy because yeah. obviously it's so deep into me. It's embedded into me that 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 education that I got to be the the man, the yeah. the, the man of the house, the one in charge. When really, yeah, and and I believed it for a while, and then you realize no, I mean I actually. I need to have my ass saved by somebody else because <laughs> I'm doing what I can, but yeah. I realize I've got a lot of limitation. Mm -hmm. And just to start with my intelligence, I'm not a bright human being. I've been lucky to end up with a movie that is intelligent and, and brilliant, but but that's because of the 100 women in it. You know, I'm just the, the messenger. I'm just actually, which is funny because Emmanuel means the messenger of God. So for once, I was a messenger of women, which... Oh my God! This is great. You know, I'm so yeah. happy about it. 
That's I, I just love that. I love that you were that guy before you did it because right. it just makes yeah, so much even sense. Even my to me. wife will admit I'm a little bit better prick right now. I'm <laughs> I'm a nicer man slightly. Slightly. Still have a lot of But you're French, work. so. Yeah, exactly. The French <laughs> things screw up. You know, I mean that's yeah. a problem when you're French. Oh, you go against another type of programmation. Yeah, so. yeah that's another movie. <laughs> <laughs> we men have a lot of layers of deprogrammation to do, you know, yes, deprogramming. We do, yeah, totally. And I, I think this film touches on so many of that, uh, of those points, of those. And I think to me, when I watched it and when I walked away, it really resonated with me for one big reason, and that was because I just intuitively, and I think a lot of women are feeling the same thing, that there's this influx of feminine energy coming back. I, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to get too new agey on people, but to me, you know, we had this this movement where women wanted to be like men. We wanted to climb the corporate ladder. We wanted to be. We thought the only way we could be successful is if we became a like a man. And now we we still want to keep that success. We want to keep that energy that says we can do just as much as a man can. Because you can. But we want to have that feminine energy back. And it's just it's coming back in this big rush. And I think there's uh, you know a lot of people are having a hard time these past couple of years because i think that the all of this emotional energy is around us now and it's the divine feminine well it's a, it's about balancing that it's about balancing the divine feminine and the yes. divine masculine and yes. realizing that together we create life yes you know life is created by both energy it's not the yin versus the yang or no. women versus men it's us together and that's that's how we make the kids so it's a common sense anyway mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if we make kids together Th that means we create life together. Exactly. So why do we argue in the boardroom? Or why do you ag argue in the street or anywhere? It's, together we are the solution. Mm -hmm. it's, it's right there. It's mm -hmm. it's a natural thing. It's it's not about being too new age. Actually, it's about <laughs> realizing it's common sense. Yeah. You know, and I think we have lost common sense because of, of all this system, whether they are religious, political, economical, that have really put us in a box and and disconnected us from each other. So we need to get out of the box and reconnect with ourselves and each other. Yeah, and there were some, um, in the movie, there were some cultures and, and um, groups that you highlighted, such as, you know, some of the tribal energies where women were almost put on a pedestal. I mean, they were regarded as being... Goddesses. Yeah. You know, well, obviously, you know, the... the the thinking that men could be God could be a man is really recent. You know, mm. way back mm -hmm. in an older civilization, it was the cult of the goddess. Yes. Which again, common sense. I mean, if somebody delivers life, it's a woman. It's not a guy. So, so it would have made sense to think that if there is a divine energy, it's maybe more feminine than masculine. Mm -hmm. The reality, obviously, is that everything is one. You know, like quantum physics shows us that there is no disconnection between all of our molecules and nucleons. So. It, it is that oneness we have to find back within ourselves and each other and that complementarity. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not a movie that is, you know, preaching, oh, we have to abandon our machoism and our masculinity and give it up to the divine goddess. Not at all. It's, again, asking for partnership, yes. which is how we're going to get to the next level when we really realize how we are so complementary to each other, so dependent of each other. And if you're happy, I'm happy. If you're sad, I'm sad. Yes. You know, so it's about that. It's really a partnership type of movie more than a pro-feminine or pro-masculine. It's a pro-humanity movie. That's what it is, femme. Mm -hmm. So it's really teaching that message that we're all one, that we are, you know, like you say, there's no separation. And I, that I we all bring in Genesis. That, yeah. you know, once we start talking, boom, I'm throwing ideas at you. It has an effect in your mind. Mm -hmm. And immediately you have an answer. And that answer is going to stimulate my thinking. Yes. And we have to keep going and, and realize that, again, we are geniuses that, are, that have so many solutions within our mind, but it has been locked because we were told we are idiots. You're only good for that. Stay in your room. Stay in the kitchen. Stay in the ball. No, we are all multitaskable. You know, we are all super creative. We're only using, what, 5% of our brain? Mm -hmm. So let's start using the 95% <laughs> left. Yeah, you know, exactly. it's, it's unlimited. Uh -huh. The possibility is unlimited. Yes. It's like... The UBN, you know, yeah. radio without limits. Well, we are human beings without limits. That's so right. let's stop putting some limitation to ourselves, and then life can be. Mm -hmm. I like how you said where you say something and it, it affects me, it affects my thoughts, because I, I get that in the work that I do as well, because everything is, a, you know, I'm throwing energy out to you, whether it be however, I mean, thoughts or speech or actions, and 
it's quantum physics because it's energy. We're moving energy around. Absolutely. That's yeah. all we have. We, yeah. we have that little volcano of, you know, bubbles yeah. of energy. So, exactly. again, let's be humble and sometimes let's be really uh, powerful about it and in power and feeling in power about it. But just using it with moderation, with uh, balance, you know, mm -hmm. the, the problem is we've used it in a crazy ways lately, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we apply it in the wrong way. So we have to refocus a little bit and, mm -hmm. and let it flow as well, not be so obsessive and manipulative and, and want it at all. You know, it's uh, take your time, breathe in, breathe out, you know, things will unfold. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree with you. OK, so I had some questions lined up, but I, I like this free flow that we've got going because that's just kind of how I roll. But there's a few specific questions uh, that I had and the women in the movie I think we talked about this before but you said they really just organically came to you that they yeah it's it's a little bit of both like everything in life you you have to do your homework it's that energy thing right yeah, it's like well, you send it out there and yeah and, and it's when you do a documentary obviously you have an idea in, in my mind I had done another movie called The Invocation which strangely is going to come after but The Invocation was a study of oneness God mm -hmm kind of physics. And when I did that movie, I realized all the answers that were given by women were more interesting than the ones given by men. So I thought, wow, that would be great. Like a macho <laughs> idiot like me does a real study on, on women and what mm -hmm. they can bring to us. Um, and so I did my homework and went on the internet and Google famous women, women in science, women in da da da. Yeah. And obviously you end up with a bunch of lists. And Again, greatly thanks to the internet, now everybody's accessible. You can tweet this person or Facebook that person, mm -hmm. and you get eventually in touch. So I was able to get in touch with a lot of them and eventually film them. And then when you meet one of these great ladies, they will at the end say, oh my God, this is great. I had such a good time with you. You should call my girlfriend exactly. there. And, that guy, yes, and, yes, and which yes. is great because it was also realizing something else that we don't have really, guys, is, is that tight network and support system mm -hmm. that you women have where, where you are a, a tribe of women trying to help each other. And the reason maybe you develop that more than us is that, again, you were raised to, to cooperate, to work together. Yes. Us, we are raised to be the only one. There will be only one left. Really? <laughs> oh my God, there will be nobody left with my thinking. Yes. You know, it's yes. so dumb. Yes. So that was, that's how it came. <laughs> so very, dumb. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> well, yeah. We, we, we are very intelligent deep down, but yes. we have a lot yes. of dumbness, we, yes. we guys. So, you know, and we have to laugh about it. That's the other thing. You know, I learned to laugh and take myself much less seriously than I used mm -hmm. to. You know, I think men are too serious. Yes. They, too, they dramatize so much everything. It's like so annoying. You know, it's like, come on. They're more dramatic It's just than women. life. Yeah. You know, Oh, life is not that complicated. <laughs> no. You make it complicated. Uh -huh. So let's let's start de-dramatizing things. Let's yes. start decomplicating things. But yeah, so to answer your question, like everything, it came with a lot of hard work, homeworks, and then very naturally, organically, bouncing from one great, generous woman to another. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you say that, how you were saying women have this network, this kind of connection with other women. And I just intuitively myself, I always envisioned um, women as being like a circle of women or this energy of mm -hmm. the circle. So it's, it's neat yeah, that you're saying that. Uh, absolutely. And if you go on our Facebook page, there's a, a little painting from one of uh, our artists, Nassim, uh, whose wife Celeste Yarnal is one of our producers as well. And uh, it is that. It's a circle of women. Oh. You know, and it's a circle of life, mm -hmm. indeed. It's mm -hmm. no, it's not new agey. It's not like gurish to say we are, we are a circle of energy. What goes around comes around. And what goes around has to come around. The problem is again lately we have broken the circles. Mm -hmm. We had said no, 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 no. It's all about me, 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 me. I'm I'm the cure. I'm the solution. Now we are together. And exactly. the reason is very simple: is the we always include you and I. Oh, there's the but the I the I never includes you know. Rarely the, the we. So yes. you, you have to be very careful about the way you think. You have to change the subject from me, myself, and I to me, myself, and we. Yes. You know, because yes. that's, yeah, maybe it starts a little bit with you and you have to be confident and you have to have a vision, but then you have to realize that vision is complementary of somebody else's vision. So together we will create things, we will create a better future. Yes. So that's. The circle. That circle. The circle. Yeah, they, uh, John, you just put it up, did you? Yeah, so it'll great. be it'll be up in the video. But yeah, that's, that's for you, that's, my friend Nassim. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love yeah, it. Yeah. Great artist and wow. great woman is partner Celeste as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Uh, okay, so what was your favorite part in the film? Because I, I love it. I can't really pick any one particular spot. I did like, um, you know, some of the greats that you had on there, some of the profound wisdom that came out of it. But um, do you have a favorite well, piece? Well, the, the favorite is realizing that we have to become peace in action. And, and that's actually a sentence that was put together by my friend Sharon Stone when we finished the first movie, The Invocation. At the end, we were struggling about really what are this movie about? And really it's about that. It's realizing let's become peace in action, which means that you have to do the I think, therefore I am and yes. complete it by therefore I do. Yes. I'm, I wake up, the I stand part. up, I get out of my couch, of my house, yes. and, and I really act on my thoughts. Yes. And so that's really something that happened, I think, within the two thirds of the movie because the, the first part and second part is more explaining what has happened to us, mm -hmm. you know, that disconnection. And then immediately we understand that and we realize, oh, wow, well, now let's find back the connection. And so to find back the connection, you, you need to act. Yes. You need to come and meet together at a radio show. You know, we could have done that for my home, but it's not the same energy mm -hmm. that's going to, you know, be projected to people. Yeah. It would have been very cold, you know, neutral. You know, yes. Maybe you would have text and I would have done something else. But we, we have to stop to be distracted by, you know, outside influences. We have to really get one on one with each other. And that's why social medias are great, but they limit you at the same time if you be to become too dependent of them. Yes. Because then you r become even more disconnected. Yes. So, yeah, you need to look for somebody on Facebook, on Twitter, and then say, hey, you know what? Let's have a drink. Yes. Let's have tea. Yes. Let's uh, yes. go see a movie. Mm -hmm. But you don't replace that, that, you know, intertwining of the of the human energies. There is exactly. nothing that is irreplaceable. I, I totally agree with you. Totally. And, uh, you know, what you were saying with the, um, the action part. Th people forget that because the, the law of attraction is such a big thing and people think, oh, well, what we think about, we bring about. But they forget the action part. And yeah. It doesn't work if you're not going to take the steps. And sometimes you might not even see the whole path. It's just take that first step, you know, put the ball into motion. And then like you with collecting these women, for example, it's just it, it snowballs because you're interacting energy. You're throwing mm -hmm. that energy ball out there and then it just starts the wheels in motion. Absolutely. Yes. That's why I always say to my friends, it's like, you know, the yoga thing, the meditation, the praying. Great. It's step one. Yeah. The second is shut up. Get up and go find your life. Exactly. Go find your destiny, yeah. you know. Act, you know. Exactly. At attraction has the word action in it as well. Yes, so. yes. I love so, that. And that's why I think it wasn't that necessarily totally understood when people fell in love with The Secret and all these other movies. They thought, yeah. oh, that's it. I just need to project and the universe shall give me. And I always say, well, y what do you mean? Who is the universe? You are. Yes. So if you just wait... And yeah. pray and meditate, nothing's gonna happen. You have to do both. Yeah, yes. yeah. You have to center yourself and find yourself cool and then you have to move in your boat. Yes. And and figure out how can I help that person. And 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 if everybody does that, there will be always some helping coming back to you. So yeah. y th that's a really complementary work. Yeah. I agree. I mean, some of the best things I've ever done in my life were just taking that risk, you know, saying, I just, I feel like I need to go meet with this person. Right. I have no way. I, I mean, I've met with people and we get together and I say, I really don't know why we're meeting, but I just felt called to meet with you. Yeah. And that's another thing is we have castrated our instinct, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and that, that, you know, for example, they always say women have a sixth sense and men don't have it. And that's, that's another thing we have done to mm -hmm. us men. Mm -hmm. oh, oh my God, we have no more instinct. We have no, no more common sense. We have killed yeah. all that because we have become so obsessively analytical and so obsessively like you detail oriented. It's like, no, no, you have to see the big picture. Yeah. Doesn't mean you forget about the detail, but the detail will reveal themselves in time. But yes. you have to think big before thinking little. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the action part. It's it's interesting you say that too. It's like we're totally in sync right now because you're bringing up all these things that are in my questions. Like the word femme was going to be my word of the day because you were saying big picture. And, you know, of course I've got the book, uh, The Energy of Words. So I'm always looking at words via the numbers. And the word femme adds to a six, which is six is the number of the visionary. Right. It's the number of the creative, well, it's the creative expression number. It's all about seeing the bigger, broader picture and being that creator, that nurturing creator. So it's such a perfect word to to be attached to this movie and the message that you're wanting to get across. How did you pick the title? 
that that was a struggle. Even initially, it was called the Goddess, and that's why you know I always do music, mm -hmm. and I did the album before the movie was finished, and it was called the Goddess, oh. and that was more of the vision with the eye and everything. And then when I did I show that to not only the women but also my investors, who were some of them. Thank God, our men. Um, they got the wrong understanding of what it was. They, they, they thought, oh, after the invocation, which was truly a study of God, maybe more on the male vision, uh, you're doing the goddess. And I'm like, no, not at all. Shoo, that doesn't work. Yes. And femme, I don't know if it's because I'm French, but it just came again very naturally. I listened to my voice within my crazy head, and it came. It's like, Oh wow! Well, it's it's about that. Even so, it's more than this. Yeah. But it's fine. And also, you know, because again, I'm a man, and I'm, I, I analyze always, you know, the possibilities of the movie I'm creating. I'm always trying to package them and understand who is my audience and what what do I do after with that movie. And I thought naively, uh, well, probably this movie is more than for women than men. Mm -hmm. I didn't foresee that actually every single man that watched the movie love it as much as every single woman. Uh -huh. And that was like, wow, such a, a realization at, at screening when men would come and say, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, why? why thank you? Because now I get it. I understand what's wrong about me and understand a bit more what women are about and how we can dance together, how we can live together. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. Because yeah. now it's like, uh, even so I didn't start with a thinking to make a self-help type of movie, it has become that, you know, and, and the same with Invocation. Yeah. There are movies that can be seen on different layers, and one of the layers is really rising. This is a tool that will help you unlock yourself and your possibilities, mm -hmm. like The Secret Was, for example, or What the Bleep Do We Know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of get the sense of the word like wholeness to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, that's kind of the energy I get from the movie is this sense of wholeness and becoming more whole or more complete. So today was supposed to be the launch day, but <laughs> it isn't. Um, did you, I don't know, John, did you have all, this is the, the, the DVD and this is the... The, the CD, right? The, the CD, the music yeah. that I uh, created the, with my friend Kevin Rydell. This is the music in the movie, right? Yeah, s most of it, most of it. I mean, there are so many, so many, so many incredible uh, musicians in the movie. So vi this is more like every time I do a movie because I, I write poetry, I always, you know, again, serving my own crazy ego. I love to <laughs> put something else out there. Yeah. And I, I used to manage uh, punk rock bands in Santa Barbara when I moved in, in the late 80s uh, in the US. And so I kept in touch with a lot of the these bands. And now when I make a movie, there are always, you know, musical ideas that come to my mind and, and poems. So I usually partner with few friends and we put an album out uh, every time. Nice. And, nice. Uh, and today we're going to assign them all and yes, give yes. them all so, away. Okay. So here's the, let's drum roll because we, we get to have these signed by not only Emmanuel but also Sharon Stone. So somebody's got to call in. <laughs> call, call now. <laughs> that sounds like a commercial to them. So we put it out there to Facebook, Twitter, and uh, uh, don't be shy to call in. I won't bite. Well, I might, I might bite, but she might. Um, that's just, why I'm keeping my distance. Well, that's yeah. it. So, but uh, yeah, call in and get it, or I'm taking it. So. <laughs> All right, so today was going to be the launch day, but they pushed it ahead. I was going to tell you a little bit about today because I thought it was really neat because today is a pure two energy, which is two is a number of intuition and sensitivity. So it's all about that divine but, feminine energy. But every day it's, it's always the launch of the movie, I feel, because, you know, the movie has been available yes. online for now since September 11. Yes. Last year we did a big you know, launch at a theater in Santa Monica, and we launched it not only in theaters, but also on VOD and on the internet through the website femthemovie.com. So every time I do something like this, I feel I'm giving, I'm delivering, you know, and that's why I wear my t-shirt <laughs> yes. with a big belly, because I, I really feel I deliver uh, the baby every time over and over. Yes, yes. And, and the reason is also because every time the conversation is different. Mm -hmm. So I always try and hope to think that people will want to either discover the movie for the first time or rediscover it. So, mm -hmm. you know, the DVD is released in one month, but don't wait. Just go on femdomie.com yes. and watch it now. Actually, it's cheaper to watch it online anyway. <laughs> so where is it going to be available when it finally does come? It will be available uh, on DVD a little bit everywhere, mainly through Amazon. Uh, and right now you can find it through the website, but also on iTunes, Amazon, Vimeo. Um, and then there will be boutiques that will carry it that are more tailored at, you know, new age kind of uh, book and all that. 
Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I can't wait and, till and it comes cool, out The cool thing with buying the DVD on yes. top of watching it online now is that the DVD will have the Spanish version. Oh. So that's kind of cool because I just came back from Chile. What uh, about the French yeah. version? The, <laughs> hey, uh, maybe next year. You know, the French are always late, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the exception to the rule of being French. I'm always very <laughs> punctual, but French take their time, so yes. I'm not going to wait for them to read the movie. But no, the the Spanish version is available because um, the first country that really launched it internationally with a big premiere was Chile. Oh, you know, isn't that interesting? Until yesterday, Chile was doing very good with World Cup, so I'm I'm sorry for my friend in Chile. But anyway, <laughs> that was a parenthesis. And uh, so we, we got the Spanish version. And also in the DVD, there will be complete interviews, like 15, 20 minutes with Sean Stone, Miriam Williamson, who just ran for Congress, um, Maria Bello, uh, and myself. So you get more than just the movie, the which, movie which yeah. I think it's a more complete experience. Yes, yeah. All right, let me see what... Oh, yes, the, the awards. You've already received a lot of different awards for this already. Yeah, yeah, over I think 10, 15, we've been in 25, 30 film festival wow. all over the world. Like, like I said, just came back from Chile, but we went, uh, you know, in Aruba, in Bermuda, uh, in Europe. So yeah, I'm, ve- I'm really, really happily s- surprised always a little bit of the of the huge success it, it got, you know, yeah. and, uh, I'm, doing and I'm glad right. because we worked out. I mean, we it took us, you know, almost four years to finish this movie so it's a lot of work it was shot all over the world you know i put all of my saving in it which people tell you never put your own money i'm like on the contrary you should put a little bit Mm -hmm. of your money because it shows good faith is that you believe in what you're doing and also sometimes that's the only way to move the mountain and it was a mountain to move trust me when i approach investors and say i'm gonna do a movie on women they're like Oh my God, you're so French. I'm like, no, no, oh please, you know. And <laughs> even people say, would there be a porn star? I'm like, so in me, I say, yes, there would be a porn star. You're a man, do you want to invest? <laughs> and I did put a porn star, Joanna Angel. So t- just to yes. show that again, all, all together we change the world. It's not, it's not necessarily the people who think we are changing the world who do change the world. Yeah. Okay, let me see. What, there's a couple other ones. I think we've kind of covered a lot of them, but I've just kind of having a little cheat sheet here because I didn't want to miss uh so well I, I want to know the big question how did you end up working with Sharon Stone how did that happen like, again it's work and let it flow um when I did the invocation so the the movie on God with Deepak Chopra Dalai Lama Desmond Tutu um because I wanted to be a bit pushing the envelope and be controversial for the narrator and for that movie I wanted a narrator there is no narration um there is no spoken narration in film, it's written. But for invocation, I wanted kind of a very strong voice, maybe the voice of God. And in my head, as I was driving, I do a lot of thinking driving because I live in Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. So going back and forth to LA, give me like an hour and a half. That's my meditation. That's when I meditate, when I think, mm-hmm. driving, mm-hmm. with music usually blasting the Ramones or something punk rock. Um, suddenly <laughs> a voice came in my mind. And that's bizarre because you know, I always, I, I, I'm a journalist as well from France, so I interviewed pretty much every movie star. And for a strange reason, I only interviewed her once. Uh, it was for the mighty, beautiful movie that she did, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. Um, but a voice came in my mind, and, and I wasn't sure why. So I, I, I really, you know, every time that, c- that crazy thoughts come in my mind, before really following with it, I try to analyze it a little more. So I went home and I watched again Basic Instinct and Casino, and I thought, wow, this is perfect for the voice of God, indeed. Um, so at the same time, <laughs> it, by flukery, by, by pure divine coincidence, yeah. we, uh, I, I realized that a friend of mine, Nathalie Dubois, who is an associate producer on my movie, who knew her and knew her partner. So she put me in touch with her. And immediately I, I tried to convey a circle of relationship with her and show her what I was doing. And she wasn't really convinced about it. The, the first movie was a mess initially. It took me like a year and a half to properly edit it to a, a level of, of quality she wanted to be part of. But eventually, by showing over and over cut from the invocation to Sharon, she accepted to become the narrator. Mm-hmm. And that's when we really became close friends. And immediately after the release of the movie, outside of the US, for some reason, it's, it's just been released on VOD. Uh, but she, I told her, I said, you know, I think I'm going to do a study on women, femme. And she said, oh, brilliant, Emmanuel, go for it. 
you know, and there was no hesitation. Maybe I had mature, maybe I had been transformed from making the first movie, but she really gave me an, a huge level of trust. And she said, I'm behind you 100%, go for it, let me know how I can help. And now we have developed really a relationship where we've been working together for almost a decade, 10 years, wow. and we are doing five more movies. Wow. So it, it has become real. And she's the godmother of our newborn son, uh, Rex, which oh. is great. Yeah, she yes. came and visited us last week. So it was I think, well, beautiful. I don't know. We've got a caller, but it might be Alex. He was supposed to call in and kind of weigh on it. It's not, is it? <laughs> no. Hi, this is Tanya oh. TKO. How are you? Oh, we've got... Hello. Who who is this? I missed that. I was putting my headset on. Oh, this is Tanya TKO. How are you? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I was calling in to get a a, a reading. Oh, we're we're actually not. We weren't going to do readings because we have the guest. Um, I I suppose Emmanuel, if you could give me five, would you would you mind if I did? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, what I'm gonna say no oh, to a woman well, you know. after. Yeah. A, a, <laughs> Uh, I hate to turn anyone down, and and uh, since you're a woman and it's all about femme, <laughs> let Absolutely. me. Uh, John, do you have a and pen? And I'm very candy? intrigued. I never seen that being done. So. Oh, we're we're kind of impromptu okay, today. Yeah, let's yeah. just see here. I'm gonna get a pen for you. Oh, here we go. I've got it. All right, let's let's do this real quick, and so we'll get back into the uh, the femme release. I thought you were calling in to get your signed copy of uh, the DVD <laughs> signed by Sharon Stone, but I guess. The reading's more important. Okay, we'll do it. Let's do it. What's your date? Well, of actually, I wanted both. But oh, I, I, I don't. I don't want to be too. I don't want to impose too much. It's but, okay you know. to be greedy. Ask for both. Yes. <laughs> Step into your feminine power. <laughs> okay. What's your date of birth? Eight four seventy five. Eight four seventy five. Okay. Let's see. I guess I should have said that in the beginning so people wouldn't call in. Of course, John, we, we didn't get one last week. And yeah. the, the one time that I thought in my head, we weren't going to do readings. <laughs> okay, let's see. 22. Okay, 34. Okay, so this year for you is uh, a one year. It's a number of new beginnings. I don't know if you feel like that this year, if, if um, it feels like you're mm -hmm. kind of turning a page or, or starting something new or taking action on maybe changes or plans that you've made from the previous year. Absolutely. Okay, let me see. So 29. And how old are you now? You would be 38? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. By the way, men lie about the hedge even more than women in Hollywood. <laughs> You so know, men don't be lie ashamed. about different increments. They uh, lie about a different number. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I'm, I'm 40 when I'm 60, you know. <laughs> and then a 20-year-old will pretend he's 40, especially in certain situations, right, it, ladies? Yeah, you know, yes. I, I find that men lie about the inches, you know, either their <laughs> height or other places. Yes. That's how we survive. We lie. Yeah. That's, a, that's the truth about men. That's how we have survived the last 3,000 years. We have lied to you about what about <laughs> economics, about politics, about relationship. But we're going to have to stop, right, guys? No more <laughs> lies. Yeah, so it's funny you say that because they do lie about the height, too. It's it's one of those things that uh, I've seen it over and over. I have to chuckle about that one. Okay, so you are not only in a, a year of uh, new beginnings, but your outer cycle, your larger cycle is an eight, which is all about abundance, manifestation, going for your goals. It's kind of a big energy where things are coming together for you or think you're kind of taking a step up in terms of um, accomplishment and achievement and what you've been working toward seems to be coming to fulfillment or finally things are moving that's the kind of the energy that's going on right now for you um, mm -hmm. you're you're a seven seven is the truth seeker so they're always the ones that are leapers before thinking or they usually are the ones that take action a lot of them like to work with their hands whether it be like a, a hairstylist 
um, butcher, surgeon, they're always working with their hands. It's, as, it's almost as if the power comes through their hands or that is how they best do their work is through their hands. I don't know if you do that. But the, the mm -hmm. flip side of it as well is that they can be very philosophical people. So they tend to be quite intelligent as well. You have a lot of active energy on your chart. You've got all three of the physical numbers and also all three of the most active numbers on all three of the planes. So the mind plane, the soul plane, and the physical. So you've got the arrow of activity or grid expression. And the other one's called the arrow of practicality. So a lot of physical energy, a lot of restless energy. Um, oftentimes when I see the arrow of activity, it's one of those energies where the mouse wheel is always going or you're always needing to be involved in a project or thinking about the next project or just you're always churning something. Do you find that gives you the restless energy sometimes? You know, everything that you're saying is so spot on. I'm just, I'm blown away because I'm wondering, does everybody who's born on my birthday have the same thing happening? Well, very similar, yes. So they'd be under a similar flow, but there's a lot of intuitive stuff going on with the numbers too, because what I'm doing is I'm reading patterns and ener <clears throat> energy is really cycles and patterns. So the numbers are just a way to see the unseen. So I'm looking at your pattern, your particular energy combination. So when I look at the individual numbers in your date of birth, they're like, to me, like musical notes or, you know, frequencies. So these particular frequencies someone who was born on the same date would have the same frequencies but as I go it's to me it's like a story you know I'm weaving this as I go based yeah. on what I'm feeling uh, about what's going on with you so you know Emmanuel and I were talking about the energies and that we were being in the same room or talking with you on on the phone or on the radio I'm sensing energy so I think it's do, the, do you the send the energy with a ton of voice as well does that help you I think it does you know it's it's like a vibe that that comes across and I I uh, I guess it's like you say, it's just the energy, you know, you're feeling that energy. And when you mm. meet with someone, it's way different than social media, for Absolutely. example. Yeah. So that's kind of what right. it is for me. But um, you've got a single one, I have to say. So there's you have a little bit of trouble with uh, verbal self-expression. So, you know, not necessarily an easy time with saying how you feel and what you need and what you want. Um, you'd probably be better um, or more expressive on paper or non-verbally than, than uh, you know, maybe saying it outright or that tends to be more in relationships though but I have to say um, you've kind of been in uh, the cycle before this one is interesting because you just started this cycle and the one before that was all about intellectual learning it was all about collecting pieces so you've really been like prepping for this part of your life right now it's like you you're coming into the main event where all of the rest of the stuff you've been doing is just kind of collecting the puzzle pieces and now you're putting the puzzle together does that make sense wow. to you? Wow. This is so amazing. So I don't know if you've taken a lot of classes or courses or just, you know, learning or reading or researching, but that was the cycle you were under for quite some time. Right, right. Well, I just, um, yeah, I just, I'm at, a, I'm at, I'm at a, a starting point now where everything that I've learned before is really coming to fruition in the, um, my, I, I just started a new show and everything that I've been learning and the different pieces have all really started to come together, like you said. Yeah. Um, uh, the couple other things I want to uh, tell you before I let you go, though, is uh, your gift is the 12-3. Um, it's really your gift is about connecting the dots for other people. So I don't know exactly what you're doing with this new show or what you've been doing, but you're really, like I say, the dot connector. You're bringing things full circle for people or helping them become more whole and complete. And then your year of birth adds the 22-4, which is the master builder. So again, it, it really emphasizes that gift of bringing things together or helping people build a more solid foundation or build upon what they want to do. Wow. But the, it's like you Googled me spiritually. <laughs> <laughs> she Googled your soul. Yes. <laughs> But there's always going to be an underlying uh, energy of truth to whatever you're doing, too. So you have to keep that in mind. So it's not it was never going to be superficial. It's always going to be something about getting to the bottom of the truth of the matter. So that's really the, the, the overtone of what you do for other people and how you share your gift. Wow. You are amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. So... Um, why don't, how are we going to do this, Emmanuel? So she's going to get a signed copy. So yeah. do you want me to put her in touch with you or do you, wa do you want to? Uh... Uh, you, you can keep all of these. I'm okay. going to sign them and then you. Okay. 
All right. to the audience. Okay, why don't you... Um, who, who? She can call the office and, and she can call. Them, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Do you want to do, what was yeah. her name again? Tanya. Tanya. Tanya, Tanya would you, oh yeah, mm-hmm. okay, Tanya, can you do that? Uh, contact UBN Radio and Absolutely. we'll get the info, or get your info so we can send you the, the uh, CDs. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, before, before I go, did you see anything in the, in the numbers for love? You know what? I always tell people, because this is a big career energy for you right now. It's really focused in on finally stepping into your path and your purpose, that kind of big energy. So I usually stress that until that transition is complete, until you really feel like your, your sail is pointed in the right direction, usually, and this happens much more frequently now where the people not necessarily have more important paths or purposes, but they're, they're pivotal in terms of this global shift that's going on. So it's, it's bigger than just, you know, getting a job, you know, it's, it, this is your life, yeah. this is your path. So there really isn't much room for romance per se during that time. So I would have to say, you know, Mr. Wright isn't, going to be around the corner anytime soon not not at least for the next couple of years I mean you you may meet him and you know connect in terms of the work and all that but I, I really I, I'd say love would be would take a back seat right now years I'm 38 <laughs> well I'm sorry honey <laughs> like I said that's not to say you're not going to meet him but you know the big wedding and the whole nine yards probably not <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm going to go massage my ovaries right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome, honey. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for calling uh, in. That's a great quote. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Right, that's, that's a great quote. I'm going to massage my ovaries. <laughs> I have to use that more often. That's funny. <laughs> Because right. after doing a movie like Femme, probably I've, I've grown some ovaries, maybe. <laughs> you could have. You might have one in there. <laughs> you might have two sets of things, you know? <laughs> All right. So I'm curious. Oh, 10 minutes? Okay. I'm really curious to know what the next projects are. Because I know you were saying you have five more. Five more. Can you give well, us a the, the reason sequel? also the five, you know, which actually is a collection of seven movies, I have branded the entire. The entire endeavor as the Universalist Collection Documentaries for a Conscious Humanity. Because again, I, I, like this listener, I really feel that a lot of people feel there is something boiling right. and they are a little bit scared to act on it again. Yes. So we are here to reassure them, maybe give them an extra guidance, whatever. Um, but then they have to do the work themselves mm-hmm. and go find that man, go find that job. Um, so we are doing five more movies that are very complementary from the two first one. Right. The two first one we have really a study of our mind or soul, mm-hmm. uh, what is inside here and how to unlock that. And then the next five movies are how do we apply it into the material world. The action because part. Because into the action. Because mm-hmm. that's, lo- that's a poem of a lot of uh, movies like The Secret or What Do They Bleep. They don't really totally really give you the keys to apply it. It's, mm-hmm. it's too metaphorical, too philosophical, and, and yeah. people don't get it. And or when they apply it, they apply it wrongly. Like yes. uh, so many of my friends said, oh, I watch The Secret. So all I have to do is take a piece of paper and write, I want, I want, I want. Uh, good luck. Nothing's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Well, yeah. Actually, you're going to get more frustrated and you're going to even maybe develop a sense of guiltness if nothing comes to you. Mm-hmm. So in these five movies, we're going to study five big subject matter that help us really becoming that being in action. Mm-hmm. One is on economics and politics. It's called We the People, a re-evolution of economics and politics. And the reason yeah. is because really it's through economics and politics that we totally transform the material world. Yes. And we've seen it again. For the last 3,000 years, the world has been politically and economically in the end of men. Yes. And they have applied a real strict fascist regime. Mm-hmm. You know, again, the 1% controlling the 99%. We're still living in the land of the pharaohs and the kings. Yes. Nothing has changed. No. We pay taxes so on everything. So true. Well, even our house, on air, we breathe. That's illegal. That's, that's immoral. That's a profound concept. Absolutely. Because uh, to me, that's you. You we got it to, right on the money. I mean, we, we need to do a revolution. You know, we think we're civilized and and uh, not at you all. Know. It's again, it's a land of the have and the have nots, and that's yeah. not normal. With so much richness, so much resources, yeah. there's no reason for no, so many no. kids in America or yeah. India anywhere to be in the street. You know, I mean, one family out of four of four people in the United States live with less than twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow. 
That's not normal. No. And it's, by the way, it's the same in France, it's the same in all our developed, civilized world. So anyway, that's going to be a strong movie. Second movie is called The Cure, and it's healing the mind, healing the body. And it's going to be a world tour of medicine. And what does that mean to heal ourselves? So uh, we will look at modern technology, but realize, hmm, maybe we have to go back to a little bit backward and common sense and look into the ancient in the healing and the more spiritual healing and all of these forces as well. Another one is called In Sports, and it's going to be the first sport movies seen through the four elements of earth, wind, fire, and water. Because again, to solve all of the problem of the world, we need to reconnect. And that means our bodies need to be reconnected with the elements that are making it and the elements around us. The fourth one would be the movie called Animals, we all are. And again, complimentary because we need to reconnect also a bit better with the, the, the uh, kingdom, the animals kingdom. And because we are animals anyway. And then the last one is called War, a love story. Oh, like and it's one. really, again, how do we transform this civilization of war, of violence, of yes. destruction, which we have taken for granted, which we think is the norm. You know, it's not about a debate uh, about having or not guns. Mm -hmm. It's about a debate, is it normal to kill? Yeah. Because obviously you can remove all the guns in the world, all the nuclear weapons. I'm sorry, I can, I can kill with my two hands. I can kill with my mind. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how we have to transform ourselves and realize that, like Gandhi said, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Yes. You know, so we have to better understand that. So I think we've done a very strong study in these two first movies, and now we're going to enforce that in five more movies. And, and the reason five at the same time also is because every time I see it with a brilliant uh, soul, you know, Sean Stone or Desmond Tutu or Gandhi, not Gandhi, I wish. Well, maybe <laughs> I sit it with him in my dreams. There you go. Um, <laughs> You know, I realize we never stick to the subject. Yes. Like, you know, that, that conversation we just had could give ways to numerous documentaries. And yes. um, so I thought, you know, I told Sean, I say it's not that complicated to shoot one or two or three or five movies at the same time. The complication is toward the end in post-production when you need a bit more resources in terms of editors, stock footage yes. and all that. So together. that means that the, the budget is a bit inflated toward the end. But the process, the next two years, when I'm on the road around the world, let's collect more thoughts and let's put them into action for exactly. the audience. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I think the, uh, that it's almost like the secret is you know so basic compared to what you're doing with these movies. It's well, like the again, we all evolve. You yeah. know, without the secret, I wouldn't yeah. be here. Well, that's it. That's true. And, and then there that's will be true. somebody in, you know two years from now that will look at my movies and say, well, that was nice. That inspired me to do this. And again, it's about inspiring each other to progress, to evolve, yeah. and realize we are not the secret. We are not the solution uh, ourselves, just ourselves, but we are part of it. We are part of the process. We are part of life. Yeah. And, and we are that important that without us, it doesn't exist. But if we think that it exists just because of us, we're making a, a wrong, wrong thinking. Exactly. Well, I can't thank you enough. This hour has gone like super fast. I could sit here all day and talk about this because I'm really passionate about it too. And I love what he's doing with this. Um, amazing. But how can people get a hold of you? How can they buy the DVD? How can they watch the movie? Yes. All that stuff. First step is again, and it's really the entry door to our universe is to go on femthemovie.com. Mm -hmm. So www.femfemme, the movie. Dot com. Yes. And right there, you can stream it, you can download it. It will tell you also when the DVD is available. Mm -hmm. And just Google us as well. You know, I mean, if you type Emmanuel and Femme and Sean Stone and keywords like this, it will come because after now uh, being on the road with that movie at countless festival and getting our award, and there is a, really a, so much access through the internet. So and you're on Facebook too, right? I'm on Facebook yes. under my name and, and the fame the movie. I'm yeah. on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are everywhere, all yes. of us. So yes. it's a, it's about reaching out. It's like that lady calling. Well. Call me in, you know, through Facebook, through Twitter, you know, call my cell phone. I always answer, you know, I, I never turn down anybody. So, and, and that's how we it. should act, you know. We have all the time in the world. We have to prioritize this. We have to give first our time to our, you know, spouses and our family and our friends. But then we should have one second for anybody that comes to you and say, 
I need help. Yes. Can you? And I'm like, yes, I can. I don't know what I can, probably not necessarily in a monetary way, but I can give you my two cents of advice. Yeah. And then you take it and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. But yes, we, we should serve each other permanently all the time, 24 seven, because we are it. capable of that. I love that thinking. Don't you, John? I love that. I, I, I feel so inspired. I, I love it. <laughs> well, thank you. You were such a terrific guest, and we're out of time. John's like waving me down here. So tune in next week. I don't know who I'm going to have on yet, but I'll let you know. <laughs> Hopefully, somebody, unless I'm in a bad mood, right, John? <laughs> we find you somebody. Again. Yeah, we'll, it's a teamwork. Yeah, it's team. Just All right. Call me. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Peace and love. Thank you for listening to Life by the Numbers with celebrity numerologist Michelle Arbo. Broadcast on UBN Radio from the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific for all things numbers and so much more. We're out in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBN.